there are funds that specialize for for your specific ideas. For example, if you're in tech company, if you're in healthcare, or if you're in uh, construction, so there's specific fund that caters for that market. So all you have to do is research those private equity or VCs, and then you present them your ideas. Now, uh, you they would have a checklist, and you will see if, if you can comply, like, and then if it's a million dollar idea, for sure, you would, they would want to fund it. And if not, then you know how to, you know, adjust more your ideas to at least get their attention. So it's also good to not put all your money or some money to your idea if you can ask for VC money. That means you'll have a, a you know, somebody, some equity approve of you or back you up. This gives you some, you know, some, how do you call it? Like, uh, like a stamp, like I'm backed by this VC. And so I, your ideas must be, you know, well worth it. So you just have to research this private equity list and you can search according to what industry they have a history of what they're putting. And there are so many of them. So how you would go that way, that path. I know for you, you have grown and scaled a merchandise company. And it's now one of the biggest family-owned brands in the Philippines. And yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there who aspire to have their own brand. My brother and I, we even aspired to have our own brand. And okay. we started to create T-shirts with a heat press in okay. the spare room of our parents' house. Okay. So we were quite lucky that we had a place that we could use. It was just a room, but it was a place to start. Okay. But there wasn't a lot of capital. So what we had to do, we had to work full-time jobs to fund the clothing brand. But as our personal income went up, we could put more into the brand. And we lasted more than a decade. And it was exciting and it grew. But on reflection, I start to think about how big could have we actually been? Could have we competed with the billabongs? Could have we competed with the rip curls? Well, I believe we could, but we just didn't have access to these venture capitalists, these people who could fund it and give us knowledge and ideas. So in retrospect, it would have been a very good idea to have those people on our team, but we didn't. And I think one of the biggest things was probably the way that our family had conditioned us was don't give part of your business away. Don't give control over to somebody else. So we didn't even know what a venture capitalist would look like. We didn't know what they wanted. So now that you're investing in businesses globally, as an investor, what are the qualities that you're looking for in a potential partnership? Okay. Uh you you look for someone who have a good foundation as a character okay who has a good communication skills and of course someone who you could grow old with like you feel like i could i could grow old with this person because the business journey is 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 not it's not smooth there would be struggle and you want someone who's really dedicated so you got to observe this now commenting also on the part that you said that they want control or part of the business. There is such thing as even you, you ask for capital and even they have some shares or bigger shares, you can have the controlling vote. You know, it's like a, a higher, higher kind of stocks that in operation-wise, you still be the deciding person to dictate the operation decision. But, of course, they get a profit. There are some things like that, like preferred stocks or something. Of course, people who told you that don't do it, just do it by yourself, maybe the earlier times before, that's the style. 
But nowadays, because of globalization, because companies are going to be big, I think the, the style now is we fish together and we eat together rather than you fish alone because your competitor is big already or your competitor is fishing with other people or like in partner with other people. So maybe before in our father's time or grandfather's time or grand-grandfather's time, that's not so. You, you better make by yourself your business and you have control and you would make money. Nowadays also can, but you won't, you won't compete to a bigger scale. So I think nowadays the trend is you have to have partners, you have to be big, and you have to be willing to share the business if you want to be big. And I love that quality, analogy. Yes. Fishing and then the, I love that. Yes, yes. And then the qualities, of course, that depends on the person who's, who's giving out the fund. For example, me, I like fast. So if I see someone who, who works fast, then... I'll put money there. But I know that FAST has, you know, sometimes errors, but if he's or they're fast enough also to, to adjust, then I'll just, I'll risk my money with it, right? But there are some person who like it slow also. I mean, that depends. So you look your partner and, and, and there are different people who are looking for different things. But I think there's, there's a key to every to every character of the person. You just have to look for it. Can you take us on a deep dive on character? Before you mentioned communication was important to you. You uh, also mentioned growing old together is important yeah. to you. Eating together, you know, fishing together. What are okay. some of these characteristics that you want in a partner? Because for somebody who has these million dollar ideas, I think they've also got to develop their character so that when a venture capitalist looks at them, they say, I would invest not just in this company, but also in this person. Well, me, I look at dedication and I look at if the communication skills is, is there, if we always communicate. Because if you, in my experience, there are, there are people who I put money and we go business, but when we didn't talk much, uh, they kind of like felt like you grown apart. Now, with me, I put money in, in partners in their business, but my first priority is to learn. So communication for me is important because I, I like learning what, what their journey is. And I, I like to know the knowledge of their journey and share how can I help them. And... If, they, if, if communication is not there, then I just put money, they grow my money, they give it back to me, might as well put it in stock market. You understand? So, so that's, that's me. Of course, other people have different criteria. Uh, so other, other things that, that are there is for culture, you know. Some, some, some people like culture, but if you're really cultured, you're, you're, you're slow. So that depends too. I think there are moments in time when you're starting, you have to be fast and culture has to be sacrificed. But when you're big already, then culture has to be in place. And you have to know, because I get offers sometimes, I, I kind of know what their size is. If they're small, I want to see if they're fast. If they're big, I want to see how their culture is. For example, uh, yeah, in, in, some, in some brands that I have, like you said earlier, but I think we're going to tackle it later, the, the, the coffee brand. I mean, I kind of know they have culture already because they're big, something like that. And, but I, I do start up too. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my way to test. It's the, there's no really, for me, there's no really a definite checklist. It's like life question, and the answer is you always answer depends. Depends on what? So if you ask me if, if this is right or this is wrong, I would still ask depends. I wanna I wanna know all the statistics, all the stats, all the all the facts. I wanna look in all angles. Then I will say if it's right and or or wrong to jump in. I like this idea of fishing together. I met a gentleman years ago and we really clicked and he liked what I was doing and he said, I'm not going to invest in you 
but I'm going to send people to you. And my business went from selling one-to-one and doing one-to-one consultations to expanding and creating a global presence in the United Kingdom. And from one person who took interest in what I was doing, I gained 400 new customers that year. In the next year, I gained 1,300. And what was really important about that was is that he became an influencer in my business. A few years later, I met another gentleman who invested in my business and he said, let's do this together. And he was able to put me in front of about 10,000 new people. So my personal brand and my company brand exploded, but we did it together. We were fishing together. He was out there with the really big net and then we were bringing them in and eating together. And it wasn't Uh something that I could have ever done by myself. Uh I was the talent but he had the cash and the strategy. Uh And it was a really good synergy. And I felt that was really important. And I love that analogy, fishing together. I think it's so biblical. (laughs) I I like to add, Danielle, that you didn't know that when you were starting. But every day you think about your business. Every day you, you, you wake up and you say how to do this and then... Tomorrow, again, you'll be thinking how to improve this. And then eventually, there would come a point where you would naturally improve. You will naturally grow. And you will naturally meet people that will do journey with you. So the important part is you're dedicated to what you're doing. And you keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the universe will bless you, will open the doors for you, because you keep thinking about it. You wouldn't have thought it in the first, you know, in the first week, in the first month. But as you, you progress, next month, next year, there's another idea that will help your business too, as long as you keep working on it. I, I did think I was going to make a million dollars in the first year, but I had no idea on how to get there. I, I was so ignorant. And I think a lot of us, when we start businesses, uh, ignorance is a nice thing. But also it can destroy our dreams because we see other people who are further down the path and we say, why can they have it? And why can't I have it? Is there something wrong with me? And even when I've spoken to other people who have wanted to get investors into their business, they have a feeling of like being an imposter. Out of all the people on the planet, why would somebody want to invest in me? I'm nothing special. What if I talk to them and I can't even explain what I do? And a lot of them start to have those fears, doubts, and limiting beliefs about their ability for somebody to invest into them. Can I live up to the promise? Can I pay them back? Will I disappoint them? I think there's a lot that happens emotionally for them on the journey too. Yeah. But you gotta, you got to still step forward now. Nobody knows the answer, but you still have to do it, and then you'll be surprised. It's not a promise of good result, but it's a promise of you will learn something. Mm -hmm. And that learning, what you become because you learned something, sometimes more valuable than the money. Because money, sometimes when you get it, sometimes it can be stolen, you have to use it, you understand. But what you become because you do the journey, you were brave enough to, you know, to go to things that you haven't, you haven't done. You research, you studied, you learned, and you become someone different. And that's the important part. Then as you teach, as you teach them, as you share them, then you kind of like, no, it's the actual thing because you do, you yourself do that journey. Mm. We spoke about culture and I want to dive deeper into that. And before you mentioned, there's times where you got to go fast and you might have to sacrifice culture. Mm-hmm. And there's times where you've got to slow down and you've got to make sure you build up that culture. Yes. One of your big investments was into Tim Hortons. And this is a significantly large coffee chain globally. And you've got 53 outlets in the Philippines. Uh huh. When you looked at the business model of Tim Hortons, what was it about that model that led you to invest into it? Okay. Uh, it started 2017 as branch one in Philippines. 
and now in 2023 it has 53 okay so it was easy decision for me that time because Tim Horton is a successful brand in Canada and they're uh, publicly you know uh, run so the systems in place the accounting in place they just want to expand in Southeast Asia and I feel blessed that I had the opportunity to be part of it so so it was an easy decision for me and I'm holding a Canadian passport so you know I, I, I like I like the brand too so I guess it was it it was a good opportunity for me to hop in uh, had it it was a new coffee brand I might I'm, I, I might thought about it I might check the people and everything but since it's established brand so for me that one is an easy decision and of course you have to be patient not because you invested for example on a reputable brand especially F and B it means you you earn fast or you have to know that if you invest something you got the willing to give at least five seven years ten years before you get your return and I was also blessed that during that time I've saved some money to put on that uh, investment and I could wait for that time so I didn't give them any you know any trouble or or I just let them grow how, how they should be you're incredibly patient five it, seven ten years and I can see that you're thinking much further into the future than a lot of people a lot of small businesses are thinking short term how do we keep the doors open today how do we pay the bills by the end of the week how can we survive another month no those are Why? necessary those are necessary stuff you must address those but what i mean is you have to roll your investment if you really want to grow stronger otherwise if you're doing well and you get your capital back it's like you're injuring your own company so if they're doing well and they can grow let them roll it and there was come a time in my experience before there's a there's an a platform where i invested the promised return of investment for two years and everything was set uh, reports and everything two years they make money but they did not return the investment and I was, I was, I was kind of like thinking, uh, I'm, am I being, you know, fooled or duped because they have money, they can't return. They said, give me one more year, then I'll return the money to you. But it's easy for me to say, uh, at the third year they returned it, right? But the actual experience of two years and one week, two years and one month, and then you're seeing the money and they're not returning it, and to be firm that you trust and you don't think of a bad stuff for 365 days of you know you can get your money it's not an easy task it's something but on the third year they returned all the money and then the next month out of it they give big returns of investment because the capital rolled already and then until now it's one of the best investment I made and until now it's giving me income every month had it on the second year I got all my capital maybe they didn't grow big enough that maybe I injured that company and I was happy I was patient with them patience isn't very popular with the new generation uh -huh. <laughs> I've seen family members for myself uh -huh. there's family businesses in our family that have been around for four generations and they're uh -huh. incredibly patient they're always looking out into the future for people wanting to build that culture why is the patience so important I, I know people want quick wins they get scammed because they're focused on these instant return on investments why is that patience important over the long term uh, everything requires time and patience may be equate to time so stability learning and even changing your perception or your 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 belief takes time 
that's why sometimes in, in, in legal stuff also when somebody is to be taught they have to they have to be you know uh, they have to be uh, they take certain six months one year three years before they get go back to the system or if you're studying it takes time also to learn and all this time equates to patience so if you don't have patience then you wouldn't really test what you learn and you didn't even see the time if how you observe stuff so so patient really is a key to almost everything learning learning whatever it takes thousands of hours so that's patience too in a way but mm. rather than that it, you have to be enjoying what you do as long as you enjoy what you do then patience is like not there it's like you don't feel it. it's like gravity if if you're looking at a business to invest in and the person's also patient but fast moving is that a desirable characteristic for you uh could you repeat it again sorry i, I wanna they, yeah. we yeah. we talked before about people moving fast okay and i believe that you can move fast and be patient I also yes. believe that you can move fast and be impatient. Yes. Moving fast and patient, is this a characteristic that you're also looking for in a business? Yes. yes. Because uh, moving fast means you're getting things done. But, I mean, you have to make sure that you're not running in circles too, you know. And uh, patient, being patient while moving fast means you kind of know that it takes five years to be stable, three years to be stable. If, if I do business, for example, with a person and one month we'd, we'd make money, I should be wise enough to know that that's not stable still. I mean, it can be stable, yes. It can be not stable too. But to answer it is, requires test of time. So you don't count it like it would be forever be earning your money. So even in your own business, there might be, you might be a good wind flow of money and you say, all right, we're now making money. We could compute this and we could calculate how to spend this. But, uh -uh, yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're earning it for six months, for 10 months, and then one year, then you can say maybe it's stable enough because if for one year we're doing this business. Mm -hmm. My family uh, come from farms. And as farmers, you've got yeah. to work all the time and you've got to be very patient. Yes. And I'd ask my dad, I'd say, what hours did you work? And he'd say, well, I'd work from the time the sun come up to the sun went down. And if the job wasn't done, I would stay at work. So the farmer's life was from sunrise to sunset or until the job got done. And I asked him about farm life. He said, you know, if you have one good year in seven on a farm, you'll be okay. You'll be okay, you'll survive. But if you have two good years in seven, you could set yourself up for life. And I've noticed with my father's ventures, he's always been very, very patient. And I believe that part of that patience had led him to stick around longer in some industries than others, because people don't have the patience to see it through. Yeah. In some industries, one of my mentors, Brian Tracy, he said, Daniel, sometimes all you have to do in an industry is be the last man standing. And for yes. example, going through COVID, if you're the only coach who survives COVID, people are still buying. Ultimately, they're going to come to you. But yes. you're just going to have that patience to get through those bottlenecks. So this is a saying. It's not a race. It's, um, it's a marathon. So, so Yeah. You're right. As long as you're surviving, then you, you, you're in good, you're in good place. Mm. So we're now in 2023. We've got through COVID, and now there's wars in Ukraine and Russia. There's a new war with Israel and Palestine, and the world's going to change rapidly for all of us. Even for us here in Southeast Asia, we're going to be impacted. You know, we've seen these impacts in the supply chain here in Taiwan. We've seen it in Australia and the world's changing rapidly. As you look out into the future, 
what industries and what global markets really excite you? When you look at them from an investor's perspective, what excites you? Okay. Uh, my, my basic is I invest in people, whatever their passion is. But excitement, yes, there is some industries that really excite me because I like platform businesses. Platform businesses because platform businesses are like investing and creating your own country with with its own population or user user base. And with that, I feel like you can impact more to help them or to, you know, to change their life. Because it's like it's like a shortcut to time because you can reach more client or more people or more customer. So what excites me is the platform businesses now. Yeah, I, I yes I know AI Biotech health, there's really advancement there. But for an impact thing, I think platform business for me is 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 what excites me really. What what's an example of a platform business? Platform business are like uh, uh, phone apps where when you click you have many user base. Uh, anything that's in your cell phone that can do uh, transaction stuff is a platform business. So, so apps, apps, phone apps. So those kinds of businesses, rather than rather than restaurant or construction, which I do have too, or or uh, what do you call this retail, but platform stuff because platform stuff you design it. You, you do the, the front end, back end, and then the world is in your reach and you can, you can engage with them. If you can contrast the real estate model, you've got real estate, you've got retail, you've got food and beverage. If you can contrast the two, so in terms of a global reach, what's the advantage of the app? What's the disadvantage of the physical model? Well, the physical model, you're sure to get customer, but it's limited to the space of, you know, and, but you'll make good money too. But in the app, the disadvantage is there's so many apps, you have to stand out. But when you become successful there, it's no comparison to physical model because your reach is as long as the internet can reach it. And internet now is like 8 billion, 8 billion people. Let's just say some of them are kids and adults. You get half, you, get, you still get 4 to 5 billion customer. You get even say 1% of it or 0.01% for it is still a, 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 a lot of number for you to impact their life and to help yourself too and to learn too. So there are so many, there's so much Fast, fast forward using technology and using internet in the specific of platforms.